SpaceX's Starship is a huge deal. Everybody already knows that. We've seen conversations over the vehicle's possible use as a super telescope, ability to travel suborbitally, and potential to serve as an interstellar hotel. While those ideas have raised more than a few questions about the future of spaceflight, there's one question that stands out from the rest. Could SpaceX's Starship make asteroid mining a reality? By all technical means, yes, of course. Starship is the most powerful launch vehicle ever created, with the payload capacity to hold the tools necessary and the space required to carry back the materials collected. That's on top of Starship's ability to be reused after collection. However, that's really not the question. Collecting materials from asteroids has been posed to scientists for years, and it's even been technically possible for a while. Asteroid mining was originally accomplished all the way back in 2003, with the $300 million Hayabusa spacecraft. Sure, it took over seven years before Japan was able to collect the spacecraft's sample capsule, which held less than a single milligram of asteroid. However, it can still be considered asteroid mining. Japan even went back for seconds with the launch of the $800 million Hayabusa 2, which collected more than a gram of asteroid. Even the United States has tried their hand at asteroid mining, with the 2016 launch of the more than a billion dollar OSIRIS-REx spacecraft, which holds a massive capsule with an estimate of up to one kilogram of asteroid material. That mission is returning to Earth in, well, 2023. As you can probably guess by those three missions, there have been three major limiting factors to asteroid mining. So, let's start by looking at each factor, present Starship's solution, and then decide whether it's feasible or not. Starting with the first factor, cost. The cheapest asteroid mining mission happened to be the original, with the launch of Japan's $300 million Hayabusa spacecraft. Consider that this mission was the least expensive, and still cost a whopping $300 million. Starship's costs and general pricing have been discussed to quite an extent in the past, with SpaceX CEO Elon Musk even proposing eventual sub-$2 million launches. However, costs have been a major argument against any prospective asteroid mining situations. After all, what's the point of spending upwards of $1 billion on a mission that can only manage to take back one kilogram of asteroid to Earth? For reference, meteorites usually price to around $1,000 per gram. Even while meteorites aren't asteroids, their similarity in composition, and likely price, proves a point. With 1,000 grams of cargo, that's $1 million in raw materials. Even at $100,000 per gram, a whopping kilogram of asteroid becomes valued at only 10% of the price of a mission. While we've still got quite a way to go before we reach $2 million Starship launches, we're already at an impressive point. According to Elon Musk, current Falcon 9 rocket launches sit at a $28 million cost on average. We've heard reports all over the place that while Starship is multiple times larger, heavier, and more powerful than a Falcon 9 rocket, the vehicle rests at a similar cost. Of course, that's unconfirmed, with estimates ranging from $1.8 million to $125 million. Even at $125 million for a fully stocked Starship launch, that's a fraction of Hayabusa's launch, and nowhere near the more recent missions. Remember, Hayabusa 2 costs a whopping $800 million, and OSIRIS-REx has had costs pinned at upwards of $1.2 billion. Even considering SpaceX's entire budget for Starship, at roughly $1 billion, we're still looking at a below average cost. Let's say even with the lowered costs, SpaceX can only get their costs down to $50 million per launch, factoring in just 10% of Starship's payload capacity, 10 tons, with the other 90% left to mining materials and the like. Starship can collect roughly $4.5 billion worth of asteroid, at a meager price of $500 per gram. That's a 90 times return on a higher than expected launch cost, 10% payload capacity, and pricing less than half that of current meteorites. Even in this theoretical situation where we've nerfed Starship's cost capability to mine asteroids, it still manages to return upwards of 90 times its original cost. Of course, we're not factoring in mining equipment, drills, extraction, and such, but with over $4.5 billion in theoretical profitability, that's quite a bit of wiggle room. According to the Asterank database, some of the most likely asteroids for mining sit at between $700 million in value and $5.6 trillion. That sure is a lot. Keeping that in mind, let's move on to the second problematic factor of asteroid mining, 
namely travel speeds and capacity. With expected returning capacities of less than a milligram in Hayabusa, one gram in Hayabusa 2, and over one kilogram in Osiris Rex, there is a lot to be desired when it comes to payload capacity. The reason these spacecrafts didn't return that much from their asteroid mining is because of their size. All three were designed to be launched into space for a minimal cost, collect a sample, and return it to Earth as soon as possible. As such, JAXA and NASA both had to decide, speed or capacity. If they decide speed, they'll have to sacrifice on capacity, which they did. You can't carry most of a spacecraft's weight in fuel and mining machinery and expect to have a large space left for asteroid material. With that in mind, if the agencies decide to move on capacity, they'll have to sacrifice speed. As you bulk up payload size, you lose atmospheric exiting speed. To even out, you'd have to increase fuel and engine size, which would then rack up the price even higher. There really wasn't a win-win scenario with Hayabusa 1 and 2, or Osiris Rex. Both had a lack of speed and capacity, with the highest original estimate sitting at just 60 milligrams for a $1 billion price tag. Of course, NASA ended up increasing their estimates for Osiris Rex, bumping up the expected capacity to over 1 kilogram after it landed. But that's still a minuscule amount. Iron, for example, with a density of 7.873 grams per cubic centimeter, would let Osiris Rex collect just 127 cubic centimeters within a 1 kilogram limit. If we introduce Starship, then the story changes. There's no longer any decision between speed and capacity, with the added benefit of much, much lower prices overall. Starship is already on track to become the most powerful vehicle of all time, at that same price point. For reference, Saturn V sat on 35 meganewtons of thrust. Starship? A whopping 72 meganewtons. So, there's the speed. How about the solution to capacity? Starship shines even more, with its 100 tons of payload capacity. There is quite a bit of mining equipment that you can fit into even half that. Asteroid mining has already been theorized to be possible with surface mining, shaft mining, magnetic rakes, heating, self-replicating robotics, and the MON process, which passes carbon monoxide over an asteroid at a temperature to gather metals. Starship even has a payload delivery system built into the vehicle, giving easy access to the asteroid and its materials. With Starship on its way to earn the title of the most powerful vehicle ever, there is a lot that can be done to cut back on the restrictions when it comes to speed and capacity. With that in mind, let's view the last major limiting factor of asteroid mining, time. Hayabusa cost $300 million, and it took 7 years, 1 month, and 4 days for the spacecraft to return to Earth. Hayabusa 2 cost $800 million, and it took 6 years and 3 days for the sample size of 1 gram to return. Then, there's Osiris Rex, which hasn't even returned yet, with an estimated 7 year return time. Space travel takes a long time, there's no denying that. It definitely doesn't help though that all these missions had spacecraft with their own momentum working as their best propulsion system. Starship would be an exception. Obviously, it's a different beast. Cost constraints had kept these deep space collection systems from being larger or faster, and that's a factor that doesn't affect Starship. The launch vehicle is built from stainless steel, comes from literal dozens of Raptor engines, and has a capacity of 100 tons. The same limitations that once applied to these missions doesn't to Starship. SpaceX has built it to survive virtually any condition, meaning that deep space is possible without having to lose out on both speed and capacity. There's also the whole benefit of Starship being theoretically capable of crafting its own fuel from carbon dioxide and water. Scientists have found both ice and carbon dioxide within asteroids and meteorites, meaning that Starship will be able to periodically refuel itself and continue its exponential speed increase into space. Instead of looking at nearly a decade in travel time to near-Earth objects, we can look at just a few years, or even months, for trips and collection within asteroids thousands of times further. With that in mind, it's pretty believable to think that Starship would be able to make asteroid mining a reality. Starship's much decreased launch costs, increased capacity and speed, and potential to continue much further and quicker into space than other spacecraft make it a great bet on the future of asteroid mining. Of course, there are also the thousands of innovations to mining technology and the instruments that would ride aboard Starship. So, what do you all think? If Elon Musk and SpaceX succeed in building Starship to what it was proposed to be, could that make asteroid mining possible? Even at a fraction of what was proposed, the math seems to work out, although that almost never means anything certain. 
let us know in the comments. And make sure to fly on by again in your brand new starship as we continue to peer into the world of SpaceX and other space-related topics.